Tamara Cameron is a single mother of three looking to finish her commerce degree at the University of Saskatchewan. She depends on post-secondary education funding from her First Nation to help her pay for her rent, food, tuition and books. First Nations teacher I have ever had in 14 years of education. Indian Affairs is looking to change their post-secondary education policy. One of the things they are considering is making the funding similar to a student loan program. It's something First Nations are opposed to. We're here to say we stand strong on Indian control of Indian education. And if there's any type of changes in policy, then we need to be... They need to talk to us about it, and I think that's important today. That's the message we're sending. About 1,000 Saskatchewan First Nation students are denied funding each year. The education is an incredible, incredibly important priority for First Nations. I believe it's important for the country. And I think it's really important to recognize that if we were to unleash that potential, by the year 2026, if we close the achievement gap in the area of education and employment, <coughs> it would result in a $179 billion contribution to Canada's GDP. Students at the FSIN post-secondary education rally want the chance to improve their lives and make a contribution to the economy. The yeah, education is actually really important. There was a so, financial like, crisis with First Nations University of Canada. We still have like so I won't be we like stuck on the reserve, we living on welfare and and like like doing nothing. I'm currently trying to First Nations graduate and get into a nice college to like become a doctor economy. so I can help out my people. Next spring, Indian Affairs plans to review the policy. First Nations leaders and students say they will continue their fight to protect their treaty right to a post-secondary education. I'm Cherish Francis in Regina.